Yeah, so, so I would like to share how I learned uh, to automate my home ceiling fan, uh, to control it using HomeKit and uh, Google Home. So first, a bit of introduction about myself. I'm not a hardware engineer. I, my background is in biology, but I'm an iOS developer. So uh, the final year of my, my studies, I founded the first two companies. The first one, uh, it tells bus arrival time. The second one is a company that makes mobile apps for clients. Then a few years back, I started another company with my friend. Uh, it makes produ productivity apps in the App Store. So um, this is my first home automation project. Not, not the hardware one. So um, there's no sound, right? Sorry. Uh, yeah, there's no sound, but but uh, this uh, this project uses uh, Google Home, and you you ask Google Home for the bus arrival time. No sound. Okay, it's fine. Um, so this is my first home automation project, so it's just purely software. Then uh, about the current project that I'm going to talk about is my first hardware project. Um, so I've always wanted to try something with home automation and hardware, so, this is, uh, so the best way to learn is to find a project to do it. So, so why automate my home fan? So I have uh, two ceiling fans. Uh, one in the living room and then one in the bedroom, they are identical model and they are two separate remotes. But they, the wall switch is quite annoying. You can only turn off from the wall and when I turn on, on the wall, I have to go to the remote and turn it on again. So I have to rely on the remote. Um, also, I've been using Apple HomeKit to control my lights and door locks and there are limited options for RF remotes that work with HomeKit. So that's why I thought this is the perfect project to start with. So I needed to choose the right platform and hardware. Since I'm use, already using Apple HomeKit to control Hue lights and uh, August lock, so it's a natural choice for me. So HomeKit is a framework to control devices at home. So you can control from iPhone, Apple Watch, or Apple TV. Then HomeBridge is an open source Node.js server that emulates the HomeKit API. So you can add plugins to add support for devices that don't support HomeKit. And then uh, Raspberry Pi, because it's because it can run uh, HomeBridge. Also, I met Sian a few months ago, and she said I should start with Raspberry Pi first because I'm familiar with the Unix environment. Um, since my remote is a uh, RF remote, so I, got, I bought some receiver and transmitter. I wasn't sure what frequency to get, but 433 MHz seems to be the common one, so I just took a guess and I, I kind of got it right. So um, since I, I'm new to this, so I just bought a starter kit because I wasn't sure what I need for the project. Uh, and so, so this, are, this is how I planned the project. First, I need to set up the Raspberry Pi. Then for some basics, I took I, I Google out how to do some LED tutorial, uh, and then I need to learn the signal from the RF remote and broadcast it to test if we can control the fan. After that, I can do the HomeKit integration. So I spent my weekend on the project uh, from setting up to completion of the HomeKit integration. So the starter kit comes with a lot of parts that I didn't know that I need. For example, the GPIO, the breadboard, breadboard, jumper wires. I didn't know all this, so it's great that I, I bought the starter kit. And uh, Google up how to connect them. Um, so the way I do things is I hack first and I understand later. So I don't really know how, why the pins are connected that way. Um, so first thing, learning the um, RF signal. So I installed a program called P-Lite. It's an open source home automation solution that runs on small factor computers. It has a lot of functions, but I'm just using the RF function. So to configure that, uh, my transmitter is connected to pin 
17 and the receiver to 27. So if I refer to the this table, I can set it, set the where the sender and receiver location is. Then I need to uh, yeah, that's what I did. Um, I run plight debug to read signal from the remote. So when I run this, there are a lot of uh, noise signal, so I need to manually filter them. So the signal that comes from it is a series of uh, numbers that measures the time difference between high, low, and low, high transition. Um, <coughs> for some reason, there are just a lot of signals even when I'm not pressing my remote. So I have to go through each manually. Uh, then I, I broadcast the signal to test whether they work using P light send. So, so you see that that's what I copied from, uh, from P light debug. Yeah, so this is a fan, and then I run from command line. <coughs> yeah, it turns on the fan. So, um, I repeat it for both remotes and all the buttons on the remote to turn it off and high, low, and, and medium. So, now that I can control the fan with the command line, I need to, I can start working on HomeKit integration. <coughs> so, on, in iOS, there's an app called Home and it controls all accessories that are HomeKit compatible. And HomeBridge, you know, um, it emulates a home, HomeKit compatible hub. And a hub can have multiple accessories. So once I add HomeBridge hub to HomeKit, anything I add to HomeBridge will be automatically added to HomeKit. And uh, to add a new accessory, I just need to create a HomeBridge plugin. So for HomeKit integration, first I need to create an API to broadcast the signal. So this API is just uh, writing a REST API that executes p -like send in the command line. Then, so yeah, so I have two fans. So one is the living room fan and one is the bedroom fan. And uh, I set the signal. So zero is uh, turning off. Then one, two, three is low, medium, high. So I have to learn it for individual remotes. They can't be reused for other remotes. And then I took an existing plugin. So this plugin, uh, it controls a three-speed fan, which is the same as my fan. It also has a temperature sensor, but my, mine doesn't have. So I removed the temperature sensor, and I modified it to call my own API. Then configure home bridge to add the fan. So this is HomeBridge config file. So I set it. So the accessory RF remote fan is the accessory type. So I added two RF remote fan, one in the bedroom, one in the living room with the device ID. So the device ID is what I use to call the API so I can identify the, the fan. Then just uh, restart HomeBridge for changes to take effect. So once I've added HomeBridge to HomeKit, then I can see all the accessories. So the living room fan and the, uh, oh, this is just a living room fan. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, HomeBridge you can use to add a, a lot of other things. So you can see that I even have a, a outlet for controlling mosquito repellent here. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah, that's all. So integration is quite easy. So you can see that the, it already appeared in my uh, phone. I can control the living room fan, set the speed here. And yeah, that's a very easy project to start with. And after that, I thought, since I'm using Google Home, why not uh, support that as well? So I used the same API that I wrote for HomeBridge. And then I used IFTTT. So is a uh, ICT is a web service where you can have a trigger that trigger an action. So my trigger is a uh, Google Assistant, so it runs on um, Google Home, and then the action is a uh, webhook. So webhook I can run REST API. So uh, I set up phrases that I can use to turn off the fan, set the fan speed. So so I have a lot of these. Applets. These are called applets. They are they all workflow. So you, I, yeah. 
So just different command to, to do different things with the fan. And uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the project. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Hong Chen.